All right, good morning, all. My name is Alex Jules. I'm the acting uh, historian for the Fellowship of Free Thought. Welcome to the seventh of our gatherings. Do we have any new visitors today? Welcome. Welcome. Is Keith here? Is Keith? 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 There you go. Hi. Tomorrow's his birthday, everyone, so just going to do that. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, Yep. <laughs> you can get me back later. All right. Um, we also want to wish uh, Will and Christy our best. They welcomed their daughter, Lily Rose, into the world a few weeks ago. Uh, so congratulations. Mother and child are doing great. To the new dad, I remind him, becoming father is easy enough, but being one can be very rough. And that was a quote from German painter Willem Busch. Um, I get to do a little bit of recap today because uh, it, it is intertwined with some of what we do here at the fellowship. Today's topic is charity. Um, anyone call out a uh, name of an atheist charity outside of Foundation for Beyond Belief? What you got? Do well, that's not an atheist charity. That's a secular charity. Atheist specific? No? OK, got one. No. Any, anyone else? No, OK. So how about? Um, like you started, Steve. Um, a few secular, non-religious charities. Ellen Keller International. Ellen Keller. UNICEF, Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders. Anyone else? Yeah, get it. Huh? United Way. United Way is secular. Yeah, it, it gets harder and harder, right? If I asked you to do, to do the same thing with a religious charity, we could be here for hours. Right, yeah, it's a lot easier. So I'm going to quote from the atheist ethicist. It is ironic that those people who believe that there is a benevolent, omnipotent, all-loving being watching over us tend to do a better job of providing real-world help to those in need um, than those who believe we are on our own and we have nobody to depend on but each other. Yet statistics consistently show that this is the case. It applies even to a simple act such as giving blood. At the current rate at which atheists and theists tend to donate blood, if everybody were to be converted to atheism, our blood supply would be less than two-thirds of what it is today. I thought that was somewhat interesting, but I also think it's a very pessimistic view of mankind. Um, and I don't necessarily agree. So I ask, is it really that religious people are more giving than non-believers, non-theists, atheists. I tried to do some research on the matter and got an overwhelming response from the devoutly religious that, hell yes, they are more generous and giving than we are. Um, in fact, Jonah Goldberg from the National Review states, let's see, we have scores of Baptist hospitals, Methodist hospitals, Jewish hospitals, Catholic hospitals, etc. Each of these have outreach programs, both here and in the most dismal places on earth, staffed with dedicated medical doctors and nurses. Where or oh where are the atheist hospitals or soup kitchens? Grumble, grumble, groan, no, okay. Um, the problem is just as it was difficult to pull out a dozen or so secular charities, it was harder quantifying what the religiously unaffiliated and non-believers really give as a group. Is it that many of us choose to be apathetic to the plight of others? Or is it that we just don't claim our good and charitable deeds? Or merely just don't get the credit because we don't seek it? I mean, if we do charitable deed, I, I quite often get the response of, if I do a charitable deed anyway, God bless you, or you're such a good Christian, or how godly of you. I usually dismiss it with a whatever, not knowing that I unwittingly let the, this person believe that their God really did send me. A reaffirmation. What if the next time someone says, I'm a godsend, or my deed is an answer to their prayers, I tell them, God was kind of busy, so he sent an atheist instead. <laughs> or, 
when I make a charitable contribution, <laughs> I, I write on the check somewhere um, just that. Or make it known that secular humanists and humanists are just as invested in the here and now just as much as those that bank on the promise of tomorrow or the hereafter. Do I really need to go that far? If not, why not? 100 years after Christ had died, suppose someone had asked a Christian, what hospitals have you built? What asylums have you founded? They would have said, none. Suppose 300 years after the death of Christ, the same questions had been asked, uh, had been asked by, uh, to the Christians. He would have said, none, not one. 200 more years, and the answer would have been the same. And at the time, the Christian could have told the questioner that the Mohammedans had built asylums before the Christians. He could also have told him that there had been orphan asylums in China for hundreds and hundreds of years, hospitals in India, and hospitals for the sick in Athens. That's a quote from Bertrand Russell. We've been here, caring, sharing, and performing charitable deeds. Many of us go out of our way to do good, for goodness sake. So is it a problem of charity? Or, as I've stated in the past, it's a PR problem. So, um, the Pope was in the news this week, right? very verbal this week. Um, it's interesting, as a former Hitler youth himself, he states that it is extreme atheism that gave rise to extremist Nazism. <coughs> yeah, ponder on that for a while. Um, we took a broad brush in defining the fel fellowship when defining the fellowship's tenets. This organization was going to do more than be just a meetup group. This organization was going to have some level of social impact. Its members were going to be out there. They were going to be visible, involved in outreach. If charity is defined as gen generosity and helpfulness, just this weekend, many of our members were out there at a nursing home, local nursing home, giving. Giving of their time, giving of themselves. But who but us will know? How many blood drives will we outnumber them and they not know? How many Saturdays will you give up giving of yourself in anonymous generosity? That's the question for you. It's an ideological one but only you can answer. I'm actually going to leave you with a quote from absolutely my favorite writer. Then said a rich man, speak to us of giving, and he answered. You give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. Khalil Gibran. Okay. All right, good morning all.